Monaco Pizza presents SCP. The Steve Dangle Podcast with your hosts, Steve Dangle and Adam Wilde. All right, well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Steve Dangle Book Signing that turned into a live podcast somehow. Yay! Yay! Paying customers. Yes. They bought books. And they bought tickets on top of books. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Forget all that. This is your return to the podcast. Oh, that's big. Yeah. It's Adam's return to the podcast. Yeah. Hey. After he gave birth to a paperweight. Yes. Him personally. My own paperweight. My very own. Um, uh, yes. Everly Blue, May 31st at about 10.52 at night. That was my... So it's my daughter. She... Uh, Actually, was born with a mullet. I'm not kidding. Yes. Uh, she has hair down to her neck already. Um, and we, it's funny because we have friends that have kids that are a year and a half and they're still bald. Um, so, yeah, we're, we love her. She's amazing. I was saying off the, uh, off the mic that last night was the first time where I was really kind of pushed to the limit. And I know any parent in here is going to be able to relate to this. If you're, if you're up for hours and hours and hours on end because they feed every two hours for the first you know, few months, um, you're at a certain point going to go, I have to put this thing down because I can't do this anymore. And I had to wake my wife up and say, please take over before I do something that I regret. But other than that, she was, she was amazing. And I don't what, mean anything bad What would that be? Yeah. <laughs> what were you going to do with this baby, Listen, Adam? Do you have a list of things there had that been are the horrible, em- you Well, there had been the emotions of the Raptors winning. And then I, you know, had, I fed her at 1230. And then she got gassy. And when a baby gets gassy, there's no, there's no consoling them. There's nothing you can do. So from w- about 1.30 to 3.30, she's just crying. She's just crying. And, and sitting there and crying. And then, you know, you have her and you're, and, you're, um, and, you're, and you're burping. And I have no siblings, right? So I have no experience with babies at all. And so she has this thing where she likes to turn her head to the side when she's on my chest and burp directly in my ear. <laughs> it's, and, it's, and it's this hot baby breath air that just invades your eardrum. That is sometimes and barf. That is sometimes, because yes, it does come, sometimes they come together. It's amazing. Yep. And, and what's, a, what's great about it, too, is that she burps like an old man. So I don't know if, again, if, does anybody here have kids? Anybody? 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 Okay, we have One? Were you a little... Oh, well, that's Okay, so daughter. what's your name? Yeah. Rob. Okay, Rob, were you a little sh- surprised at how manly a baby burp can be? Uh, yeah. Because it's like a... Uh, there, there was one point last week where, you know, we're sitting there and she's fussing. And when babies fuss, it makes it really hard to hang on to them. You've got to have them close because yes. they push and yeah. they slap. And she likes to grab my chest hair. And, um, and she's just, like, really uncomfortable. This is really uncomfortable. Not such a paperweight now, yeah, is she? Right? Ah. <laughs> and, and then I finally I pulled her off my chest and I sat her there and I said, and she's just crying. And, she, and, and she's looking at me. I'm looking at her and I'm going, and I just said, it's just a bad night. We're just having a bad night. And she looked at me and opened her eyes like babies do and went, Bleh. and everything came out. <laughs> Nose, mouth, all over her thing. And here's the best part, because I had my arms under her shoulder. So you imagine the baby's like this, and they have like 40 chins. And she's like, from that point on, she, she just went, just fell asleep. fell asleep. I was like, oh, so that's what we needed. We needed the, bur- the, the vomit and the burp, and now we can get you to sleep. Man, that sounds really tough. That's like this one time Iggy got up in the middle of the night to change <laughs> positions, and uh, it startled me slightly, and then I went back to sleep peacefully. <laughs> Reminds me exactly of that incident. I can't wait. I cannot wait. Oh, so it's going to be awesome. When this comes for you, it's going to be a lot of fun. And Jesse is going to be like, yeah, whatever. I had a kid, and it's no big deal. Unflappable Jesse over here. <laughs> Not even going to look at it. <laughs> It'll just be born perfect. It'll know how to do math, yeah. science. It'll be great. Um, It'll so be born with cut eye. So we, <laughs> I'm not sure what itself. to start with today, and I was hoping that you know you guys could help me direct the show because that's normally my job, is to kind of direct Steve, corral, huh? corral the puppies. Hello. And I, I, I wanted to know, do you want to start with Raptors Game 7? Or six. Brad Marchand, sorry, Raptors Game, yeah, 6. Or Brad Marchand's Tears? <laughs> what do we want to start with? Okay. Much what do we bigger like? reaction. What do we like? Oh, it sounds like Brad Marchand. Yeah. Brad Marchand's tears? All right. Okay, all right. okay. Are we all a little? I mean, listen, it's impossibly Raptors out at this point, but we've heard the Raptors story. Yeah. We, we were going through uh, the show before it started, and we're like, well, okay, there were a couple moves today. Um, there was the Raptors, obviously, and then there was the Blues winning, and Adam goes, no, 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 no. The Bruins losing. losing. <laughs> and, I, and I was the one that said Bruins in five. Because I thought that they were that good. Now, a few injuries took them down. You could make the same argument for Golden State. But So does this put an asterisk <laughs> on the St. Louis Blues Stanley Cup? We need to ask the question. We're on American television right now. 
We need to ask the question. Skip. Yeah. Do the blues have to give the cup back? Yeah. My comlum. <laughs> yeah. No. I think. I think that. Um, I think seeing Brad Marchand, and maybe you can uh, maybe you can back me up on this. I think seeing him cry after losing the Stanley Cup final in the seventh game in his building might be the most satisfying thing I've ever seen watching hockey. Am I right? Yeah. <laughs> Come on. Now, give him credit. He is the ultimate villain. Oh, yeah, and he plays the role perfectly. Yeah, he's beautiful at it. But he lost at home in Boston and cried. Yes. And, and the, ga- the Stanley Cup winning goal was directly his fault. A hundred percent. That was a bad change. I Or bad not change, I guess. I was waiting for some in-depth Zapruder film explanation after the game. Like, no, this is why he did. No, he just, I don't know, forgot that there was only 10 seconds left or that defense is good and leaving in the middle of that is bad. <laughs> I, I had no idea. It was, it was one of the very rare times where me, who has never played hockey, was like, that is the wrong thing to do immediately. <laughs> I, as you're doing it, that's the wrong thing to do. Well, and it's funny, it's funny when you watch the, when you watch the way different sports are handled in, in, the, in the media. So when you're talking about like basketball, everything today is about the Warriors. Can they come back? The, the Warriors are already the odds on favorite to repeat, or not repeat, but go back to the finals next year. I don't know how. Still? The Vegas capped the odds today, and they're, I think they're a 5 to 1, and the year after are an 8 to 1. Um, what? I, I know, I know. The Lakers are, I think, 20 to 1. Le- uh, aren't they second in odds? Oh, are they second yeah, in odds? Yeah, I think yes. it's Warriors, Lakers, Raptors, if I'm not, if I'm not yes, mistaken. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Ex- ex- and, you, and you go, okay. Um, if okay, Kawhi might leave, but he's still got an ACL and an Achilles. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Things I mean, Durant and Clay <laughs> don't have. They don't. That was the point of the statement. Yes. yes but very you, much. Watch, you watch hockey, and, and it's funny that no one, like if, if, a, if there was a similar play to be made in a basketball game, mm-hmm. that what Brad Marchand did on that change, that, that weak-ass, terrible change that we saw, yeah. if, there was, if there was a comparable, he would be getting fried by the basketball media. Mm-hmm. Whereas hockey media, it's like, oh, he's, but he's Brad Marchand, and we love him. He's Canadian. He's, Cana- he's Canadian. Oh, he's a good Canadian kid from Halifax, Canadian, don't yeah. you know? I feel like it's just sort of been buried. And we've already moved on to the devastating cavalcade of injuries that they all suffered. The Stanley Cup final one is always the best. Which, which one su- surprised you the most? What have you seen? The, uh, the craziest one to me was it, it seems like the standard when the Boston Bruins lose in the final is it has to come out that there was a player like legitimately risking their life. Yeah, well, uh, what Patrice Bergeron with the collapsed lung is the one that comes to mind. That right? was in 2013. Uh, Jake DeBrus playing with a concussion for two months was, uh, I think... That's just hockey, unfortunately. That, but that's run-of-the-mill hockey dumb. Yeah. It, I mean, it's still terrible and arguably the worst one, but the one that caught me off guard was Nola Chari broken sternum. Ooh. I had to Google what that was. What is it? It's your chest. <laughs> he had a broken <laughs> chest. Now, with the... Would that be this bone here? Would, is that the middle? Like, yeah, yeah. It's so like it's the middle bone that pulls all the ribs together. Okay. Holds your organs in your body. <laughs> the thing you use to body check. Remember when people said that he dove when he fell down? I don't think Nolachari is throwing himself onto the ice to draw a penalty. No. Uh, no. He's just trying to keep, okay, there's a lung, just jam yeah. that back in there. <laughs> the athletic trainers, man, the MVP for the Bruins. Yeah. Almost, almost won. Uh, John Moore had a broken humerus. Which, which what is, is that? He doesn't the... know how to make jokes anymore, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, Adam. <laughs> that's, that's a bad joke. Swing it around. Happy Father's Day. All right, all right. <laughs> it's the long bone between your elbow and your shoulder or something like that. I, I'm not a doctor. I don't know. Like it, uh, did I get it, that right? Do we have a medical? Did I yeah, get that yeah. right? Ah. Sorry, say that again. You're an X-ray, x-ray tech. tech. Okay. okay, so I'm going to repeat what you say so we get it on the recording. Yes. But what, it, what would you tell us about that? When you break your hum- humerus, what, what's the recovery time? You should <laughs> not be playing hockey. Okay, all right. So he broke that versus Tampa. Which is round... What? Wait. Broke it versus Tampa? Yeah, Last year? Yeah. which so would be the in the regular season. Oh. oh. Yeah, and he played the entire playoffs with that. Wow. Yeah, one of the last wow. games. And it's going to take about six months to recover. <laughs> yeah, Bro- so there you go. <laughs> That's okay. John Moore's injury. Oh my goodness! And Jake DeBrus, the concussion, like that was Kadri, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Or I, th- I want to say he had one and then 
the Kadri uh, incident happened, he should not have been playing hockey games. No, nope. <laughs> that was brutal, man. No, but you get one shot. I, you yeah. know, it's 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 interesting. Um, it was interesting too watching the kind of the Blues come out of nowhere because what a great story, and that's what's so great about the sport, right? Is there's there's that opportunity when you're last place, you could still come back and do what they did, which is win the Stanley Cup. Really and truly, it proves that goaltending is the only position in the sport that really matters. It's <laughs> what? Why aren't those the guys asking for like ten, eleven, twelve million well, dollars? Yeah. Why is everybody freaked out about paying goaltenders that kind of money? I I guess for me, it's just because Bobrovsky is the first goalie to have been sort of talked about in that vein. Other than Carey Price, who was, a, I mean, yeah, he should be making and that amount of money. And wasn't there who was the not Bobrovsky, pre, other Bobrovsky from Philadelphia? <laughs> other Bo- oh, Brzezgalov. Oh, Brzezgalov. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> other Bobrovsky. <laughs> Begins with a B. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but he was the one, he signed that massive deal and then just sank like a rock. Yeah. Well, and wasn't that one of those like 25-year contracts yeah. that you were able to... Can you name that? one goalie long-term big contract that's worked out? Carey Price almost this year. Almost. Yeah. I mean, he dragged the Montreal Canadiens to within a point of... The, like, let's be honest, Montreal has a little bit of depth up front, a little bit, but you've got, you know, Shea Weber on half a knee and you've got, I, I, you know... I, Jeff Petrie's pretty good still. Uh, they've got some cap space this summer, but I don't think that they were a particularly deep team this year. And they're lucky. I mean, Max Domi had a career year. Jonathan Drouin they had bounced some back. some really good years, yeah. And they still didn't make the playoffs. Yeah. They they got some good young guys coming. Um, but the I issue with Carey Price, Price it's, it's how long it is. Like, you know what? I took some heat a couple years ago for saying, maybe the Rangers should look at trading Henrik Lundqvist. I mean, you look at it now, I, he's, a, he's a great apprentice to Georgiev, but at some point, I mean, they're not going to trade him. He's probably going to end his career in New York, but might be swell. Guy makes eight and a half mil and is probably going to end up being a backup, making that amount of money at some point. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a little bit rough. Well, I wonder, I wonder with him, you know, and we're getting a little off track here, which is what we do, but I wonder with a Henrik Lundqvist, do you just suck it up and go, legacy matters more at this point? And no. <laughs> That is all. <laughs> Masai Ujiri stabbed Legacy in the heart this summer and last night. Yeah. No, all of that. Oh, my favorite player. Burn the jersey. Don't care anymore. Ruthless. That's the name of the game in Toronto anyway. I want to get to that in a second. I do want to ask you about Jordan Bennington, and I want to ask you guys too. Jordan Bennington had an incredible playoff. Incredible. And an he, incredible final except for one game. Yeah. And Doug Armstrong came out today and said he's earned his money. He's getting a big raise this summer. He's going to make a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Are we going to look at this in 12, 18, 24 months and go, ooh. You well, know, like there, there are some goalies that establish themselves in the playoffs. I think notably Patrick Waugh, right? Patrick y- Waugh, yes. he kicked it off in the playoffs in 85, and they won a cup randomly because uh, Gretzky put a – or Steve Smith put a puck off a defenseman or a goalie, and, put, and the Oilers didn't make the finals. If I'm a Blues fan, I say, I don't care. I have a Stanley Cup ring plugging my ear. Yeah. <laughs> yes. All right. Fair enough. Yes. Yeah. 100%. It's the same thing with Kawhi. If he leaves, who cares? We have an NBA championship. Yeah. Give him know? whatever give, amount of give money. Give him $10 million. Who cares? We won the Cup. Right. The only – oh, boy. I'm trying to think of a comparable, like a recent comparable. Matt Murray I don't think counts because he was sort of in the plan – Cam Ward was was Ooh. over Cam a Ward. decade ago at this point, <laughs> and that worked out that worked out pretty bad. Mm-hmm. So if we're talking about guys called up from the minors who went on a run, uh, the Hamburglar, Andrew Hammond, yeah. they signed him to that three year deal, and that went poorly. It did. <laughs> yeah, it, that's done now, right? That's expired officially this year. Uh, I think so. Yeah, he because he was playing. I want to say with the Avalanche's farm team. Yeah, or something like yeah. that. But so he was banged up and Bennington injured. will be fun to watch because I think there there has to be a reason why a guy's your fourth fourth goaltender in the organization when the season starts. Right, there has to be. And I don't mind seeing. I love the story. People go on heaters. It's great. But I just look at that and I go, they could get themselves into trouble because they already have some big money up front. Uh, Tyler Bozak's not cheap at five million bucks. No, Ryan O'Reilly's not cheap at seven and a half. What's Tarasenko making? Uh, uh, seven and a half. I want to say. You know what? Petrangelo's going to his last year. Ryan O'Reilly's a great example of one of those contracts that, when it was signed, I remember being like, "Ooh, that's pretty rich." But a couple years down the road, as long as the cap keeps going up, Ryan O'Reilly hits the open market. We're talking probably at least nine million bucks. Oh, Jeff yeah. Skinner just got nine million bucks. Yeah, you and Ryan the, O'Reilly's you win the con Smythe. Okay, whatever you were going to give me, so jack that up too, Mel. I yeah. just want the con Smythe. Give me the Brad Richards treatment. 
And uh, oh my God! Well, what, I, what a final it, he it, had! It's like when Austin Matthews signed his deal, and you guys all remember that. And the reaction was so decidedly mixed, yeah. which I was so shocked at because you look at you look at the progression of a player's career now from 22 to 27. That's really your that's your key years. I think it's the it's the guys who have been around a long time who are like, well, no, it's your you're at your best from 27 to 32. The numbers actually don't support that. Your mid 20s are when you're at your best in yes. the NHL now. We have him. For his 22nd through 26th year? He's not even in his mid-20s. He's a few years He's, away from he his was, mid-20s. Austin Matthews was the youngest player on the Leafs roster this year. No. Yes. Yes. He was. <laughs> what? That's great. Austin Matthews is the <laughs> youngest guy. So we have him for those years. That's a great deal. And, and it will be like when, you know, a couple years from now, when, that, when the cap's going to be up around $95 million, 11 and a half for Austin Matthews is not going to seem like that much. It's interesting because the, the double digits uh, contracts – are very quickly not uh, no not, not, as being, much. not being just for slam dunk players. Like no one batted an eye for even Tavares really, uh, McDavid, Matthews, a few people, oh, you know, it's a lot of money, but like, he was going to get two digits no matter what. We haven't seen a genuinely terrible double digit contract yet, but it's coming. I think that I think this summer is going to be yeah. the, the summer. Did you have something you wanted to do? No, I just confirmed your youngest player on the Leafs. Yeah, he is. It's yeah. it's it's weird to think, right? Because he's been. It feels like he's been around forever. He's twenty one, and he's ours. That's that's the best part. <laughs> I like that part. Hold on, imagine twenty one and starting in October first, he's going to make a paycheck that prorated over six months is going to be worth eleven and a half million dollars in a six month period. He will make eleven and a half million dollars and be captain. And be captain. Yeah, that that matters more than the money. Yeah, right. right? Yeah, for <laughs> sure. You think captain? Yeah, yeah, for yeah, sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. No, he's good. Hey, listen, I trust CJ. He came on the podcast talking all sorts of man. Someone from Sportsnet after that podcast was like, "Did you apply CJ full of drugs? Like, what? What did you? <laughs> how did you get him to say all those things?" Do you guys know the podcast we're talking about after the season ended? Yeah, yeah. yeah some bombs dropped on that one. I think. I, I mean, I think if I'm being honest, Chris Chris was a little surprised at the reaction, and I texted him and said, "Really? <laughs> we, every <laughs> Why? time he we didn't, were reacting, he in the didn't studio. think people listened. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he thought it was just us four. Apparently, <laughs> every time Chris comes on, he texts us like, oh, I thought it was just this thing you're trying out.' So yeah. like, no, man, it's like he six goes on a fun little thing you're trying. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, pinch the cheek. Oh, it's so cute. <laughs> I should say that too. Um, as of two weeks ago, when Everly was born. Uh, we hit six years as a podcast. Can you believe that? Really? Wow. Six wow. years. Wow. Yeah. And I believe it was a May 31st, which is her birthday. It was either May 30th oh, or, no. or 31st. Yeah, yeah, something like that. And so she selfishly interrupted I it. know. Wow. Unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable. Um, so I guess, I, I mean, I, wa I do want to talk about the Raptors. So who, again, you guys all stayed up last night, right? Yep. And by the way, feel free to be loud and rowdy. We want the mics to pick you guys up. We yeah. This is a live show. People are going to see this later. So feel free to, like, react and get crazy. Um, I guess maybe you need a couple more beers for that. But Which there are some. There are some. So available. Um, thanks to Ace Hill. But um, I got to ask, in your Toronto sports fandom, and it doesn't necessarily have to be Toronto. If you're an NFL fan, you've got no Toronto team to cheer for. Have you ever seen anything that satisfied you more? No. 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 Bruins losing. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Now, it's you know what? It hasn't it hasn't sunk in for me at all, at all that the Raptors won. Like it's I ex I expected to feel this unending euphoria. You know what? I sort of had it ruined times two. So uh, we there was the the game is over. Hey, let's oh no, it's oh, we're not. gonna review oh, it. No, there's a foul. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Oh, yeah. no. Oh, and let's see if they put time back on the clock, and then it's still 0.9 seconds. And I'm like, what do you mean this 0.9 seconds? It, that means nothing happened. And then Jesse explained that to me because rules and basketball, I get it. <laughs> um, so that, that was the first one that made it awkward for people. Mm -hmm. What made it extra awkward for me is, so we're sort of living in just our basement right now because we're uh, redoing the main floor. So we're cramped into this. Oh, like, he's got that blogger money. Yeah, we're we're Ooh. we're cramped yeah. into this like makeshift basement apartment with the dogs who are tired because it's like midnight and they're sleeping. My wife and I just go ballistic when they close it out and win the championship the first time last night. So much so that Charlie bit me. <laughs> <laughs> are you saying Charlie bit your finger? Charlie bit my <laughs> finger. He literally yeah. bit my finger and drew blood. It was it wasn't a bite as much as my hand made contact with his tooth. But, yeah, no. Uh, so, so for the second time when they won, she gets up and goes, yeah, yeah, because he's not going to attack her. He no. likes her. Yeah. No, but, 
<laughs> so I, I had to be like, yes, good. I'm very glad. I'm, <laughs> I'm happy for the trophy. <laughs> and he just eyed you? He did. At you? He gives me this eye like, I've been in the clink. I'm not scared of you. <laughs> And so I'm just like, oh, okay, okay, I'm great. glad they so, won. I'm going to so go to bed now. Of everybody here, there's a lot of Raptors gear here, which I love to see. And I also, I, I'm actually sort of surprised anyone's wearing Leaf gear after what happened last night. But, <laughs> it's but like I love the half. support. Um, I got to ask, was anybody out last night? Like in the, yeah, you were out. Okay. Uh, craziest thing you've ever seen? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Oh. Yeah, like, I mean, I don't understand why we need to smash glass every time yeah. when we win yeah. a championship, so but you're right. That was a cute thing when, uh, uh, I think it was when the Raptors made it to the finals. Everyone was doing the back padding, yay Toronto thing, because zero arrests. Yeah. And what people misunderstood is zero arrests does not equate to zero crime. <laughs> <laughs> they weren't caught. doesn't mean zero crimes committed. It means... Uh, the cops well, it said there's too many people. So, Jesse, you were out. I was. And, and yeah. what, was, what was amazing is so I'm watching your Insta stories, and you're, and Jesse tweet, texted us some videos that he didn't post, yeah. but um, that you didn't want to post. No. Nope. was the guy who, had a, who was, who was <laughs> dancing on a pole with his butt, and he had a sparkler yeah. underneath it for some reason. <laughs> somebody uh, somebody uh, lit <laughs> off sparklers <laughs> on I the ground. I think you should have posted that, that one. I should have posted yeah, I did send that well, one. Yeah. group chat. Yeah, it's so there. someone set off sparklers on the ground, and a man decides to run up to it and put his bare butt above the sparkler so it looked like he's pooping some sparklers and that it was a very so bad decision the, the best part about it was he had a friend instagramming him yeah. at, while he's doing it the whole time and they're all like ah look at us i'm like your butt's gonna light on fire stop this what's his name garrett oh, oh. Boo. Oh. high five dad joke high five. No, high five no high five no you yeah cannot. Cannot. no but i'm so disappointed <laughs> in you guys as kids, as kids, as sports fans, you grow up and you see all these championships every year. That if you're a big fan of the big four sports, you see four championships every year. And every year, like, I wish that's my team. And then finally, last night, it's our team, and it feels so surreal because you're living there, and you're like, oh, they're putting on the hats, and I'm going to go get one, and that's going to be me. And they have the parade, and I'm going to be out there. It's, that's going to be me. It's unbelievable. And you feel like a 10 – I felt like a 10-year-old again because that's what I oh, yeah. grew up dreaming, and it happened. I'm looking in your eyes. Your eyes are blazing. <laughs> out, it's, it was, he's he's really it's been emotional. a crazy 24 hours. It's twinkling yeah, yeah. like Christmas morning. <laughs> it is. And, you know, it's funny. Um, it, it's, it's funny what happens in those in those moments because, like, so you went out and you, you felt like a 10-year-old again. Right. I got older in that moment. And I'll tell you a conversation I had with my wife who I'm surprised after both the Leafs playoff and now the Raptors playoff is still married to me. And I think it's only because we have a child that must be the only thing that's binding us together at this point um, because she said – you know, towards the end of the game there, especially when Danny Green gave away the ball. Remember that? Oh. Yeah, the, the, you still feel it, right? <laughs> the reaction in here. Oh, my God. We don't talk about that. <laughs> no, no. So it's 9.6. <laughs> and I'm like, no. And and I, and I said, Caprice, I, I just don't know what I'm going to do. Like, I can't, I can't handle sitting through another game of this. I can't do it. And she said, well, you know, no, no matter what happens, like, look at how far they've come. <laughs> they've been so Great. Like, it's so great. So and she's I'm, really settling into being, that mom lifestyle. She's being so positive. <laughs> huh? she's well, being, you know they tried hard. Yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> she's like, when has any other Toronto team really done this? Besides, you know, like TFC and Argos and who cares? And, and, and I was like, I, and I looked at her with venom. <laughs> and I said, Caprice. And I, I got all, like, head coach on her. I said, no, F that. And I'm not swearing because we're in a chapters. <laughs> In indigo. Adam. Indigo. Indigo. Ch we're, we're in an indigo. It's the same thing. Same company, but we love like, Loves both. We are in the indigo. And, and so, say that. so I turn to her and I say, you know what? No. That's not good enough. They have to win. And she said, why? And I said, because we didn't come this far to only come this far. Oh, Socrates. <laughs> yeah, give it to me. Pre-game hype I video. I lifted that. And I was like, No. And this is with nine seconds left. And then after they won, I went over to her and I was like, I'm, I'm really sorry. And then and she's like, it's okay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, it's, uh, it's wearing thin with Mrs. Dangles. Is she's it? Like, uh, whenever I have to do the inevitable, you know, I'm sorry about that. She, no, I get it. 
I get it, but she's mm-hmm. she's getting. I'm gonna hate you for the next ten minutes. Yes. Yeah. And ten minutes is more than. <laughs> I, I'll take that. I I take that trade every time. Only ten minutes. Yeah, that's fine. Um, that's fine. we've been talking about this, and, and we're gonna switch back to hockey here for a second, Jesse. Unless you've got other stories other than Sparkly Bum. Uh, I saw. There's always people jumping on cars and jumping yeah. on buses. You weren't. That was definitely a what, thing. At what point? What did, did you, you vandalize? This is interesting. This is a good yeah. point. At what point did you go? You know. I think I'm done now. So, so we walked down Queen Street, and eventually we made it to about Queen and Young. And Queen and Young is where everything was kind of going on, Young and Dundas especially. Mm-hmm. And then I got to the point where I saw the giant bus that everyone's jumping on. And there's a bunch of scaffolding, and everybody started climbing the scaffolding. Which and is I said, very much a bad idea, <laughs> by the way, with twenty, you know, with 1,000 people on scaffolding right? meant for four. I looked at my phone, and it said 1.30 a.m., and I said, time for me to go to bed. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, either jumping around. on this bus or I'm jumping into bed. Right. <laughs> that bus was like meat thrown into a lion's den. Like, I, 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 I think the official tweet was like, oh, yeah, we put it there to guide traffic. No, you didn't. You were like, it's sort of like the parents, the cool parents who let your group of friends drink in the basement. They just want to know where you are. <laughs> and the police were like, you know what? They're on the bus. <laughs> it's cool. Leave them there. We've budgeted for this. We've budgeted one bus. Yeah. <laughs> this one's yours, Toronto. Have at there it. There you go. <laughs> Sacrificial it was bus. It was one of the old ones, wasn't it? It, it wasn't was. a new bus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but I think it was just a company who kind of just left it there and were like, okay, this is going to be the yeah. traffic divider because no one's going to be able to get into this area. And that was a terrible yeah. no, decision. No, that's a wrong thing. Yeah. Well, it's funny. when With riot control, and they'll never talk about this. But just so you know, whenever you see, like, I don't know if you guys remember the G8 thing that happened in Toronto, like, six years ago, where there's all, the, all those riots and, and, and the anarchists came in and they blew things up or whatever, um, that police car that caught on fire was intentionally put there. And the reason they do that is so that you've got a point of interest, so that it's like, it's like kind of ants swarming around a piece of cheese, right? Like, they're, they're like, everybody's kind of focusing on that rather than smashing everything else. So if you smash the police car, at least it's just an old police car. It's not a whole bunch of windows for buildings that need to go back to work in the morning. Adam is drifting dangerously close to World War II discussion no, territory no. and I'm Russian, just saying. Russian history for so a treaty. That bus was definitely put there for a reason. Oh, yeah. Here, like, here there's a go, reason kids. there's one bus in the square, right? Come on. Yeah. So, well, and I also saw a couple cute treat uh, tweets because there was like a truck that, oh, who let that truck in there? What? It's Toronto. <laughs> it just drove in there because it doesn't care. <laughs> and boy, did it get a surprise. It's, it's almost like the jerk from a Jurassic Park movie. Like, I'm not listening to you. And then a raptor eats him. Yeah. Raptors fans ate him. There you go. It was very literal. Good point. The, the other video that I saw. Boy, Jesse has to get up so and walk so much further for the camera. This is what he has to do every time, by the way. He's get up and change it. We are investing in new equipment this summer, so we won't have to do that as much. The other video he sent us was, uh, you guys know Nathan Phillips Square, like you can picture it. You know the arches above where the ice is or where the pond is? There there were people on that. (laughs) There were people like 50, 75 feet in the air. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, see, that was not as fun because that's like, I might witness someone get... Well, yeah, very it, injured. Yeah, so yeah. you saw that up close, right? Yeah. So yeah. those arches that they were safe in the end. They were safe. Yeah. But what the crazy thing about it is the video that Jesse sent us is you've seen those arches at Nathan Phillips Square, right over the uh, the rink. Yeah. The two guys passing each other on the arch. Yeah. And those arches are this wide, right? So there's two guys standing on it. Because mm-hmm. one each guy other. went up, and then the other guy's like, "I'm coming up to join you," and then he trails them, and they. High five at the top of the arch, and then and then they try they to and every and there's a thousand people yelling at them to come down. <sighs> yeah, man, <laughs> it was a it was an adventure That's last night. Anxiety inducing, man. <laughs> was that the difference between seeing it on Twitter <laughs> versus actually seeing it? In yeah, person? it's because you're like, oh yeah, I want to be part of that, mm-hmm. and then you see that nut job hanging off the thing like King Kong, and you're like, you might actually die. No, please, <laughs> please, sir, for your own safety. Yeah, when you're scrolling on your Instagram, you see bar stool and you see this crazy video of some dude. You're like, ah, that's crazy, and then you see it in real life you're like i'm shaking because this man yeah. might die yeah it's it's funny when you see it on your phone and it's a guy hitting his nuts on the young street sign yeah. which is you all know what i'm talking yeah, about is yeah. the best part of that oh it's so no great. the reaction yeah. of the crowd is the best part of that oh. <laughs> I, I you know i think what it is is when you see the video on instagram at least you know he hasn't died right right you know the ending isn't that when you're seeing it live you don't know that yet exactly Another quick thing on uh, the cops not arresting you was Plant Guy, who everyone knows, the the sensation sweeping Toronto. Round of applause for Plant Guy. It's a housewarming gift for Kawhi. 
<laughs> oh my god, that guy was wasted. But like, it wasn't like he just had a plant. Like the roots and dirt were still on the bottom of it. And he's talking. To, he's explaining. I got a house where we give for Kawhi <laughs> to like three or four uniform police officers, but they're like, "That's nice plant guy. <laughs> go about your day. Just go about." I want to know. I want to interview plant guy at the parade on Monday. Yeah, I he's gonna to be there. Is oh, he for sure? With He'll be the on plant. The float. Yeah. <laughs> a question: Is plant guy awake right now, or is he still sleeping it off? I he, think he's. I think he's still going. You think he's still going? Yeah, he's plant Ooh. guy. Ooh. And no. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Playing. <laughs> Playing guy guy SDP. SDP. We gotta I get him on. One almost, of, oh, almost got cut. One of the there. other cool things was everybody was jumping in the pond in the rink at Nathan Phillips Square. Like they're just in the water swimming, and you, you start chanting someone's name, you get them to jump in, and they're in there, and they throw them a beer, and they're chilling in the pond, screaming "Go Raptors, go!" Oh, that was a cool moment. That's cool. A couple of people had fireworks too in their backpack, and taking them out and lighting them. That was a little, <laughs> little dicey. But when they went off in the air, it looks cool. <laughs> w- would have been very traumatic for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <yes>. <laughs> <laughs> bring, b- bring back a lot of bad memories. <laughs> Steve, we find Steve hiding under a table somewhere. <laughs> like a puppy? <laughs> yeah, like exactly. <laughs> <laughs> they put my thunder coat on? <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> so I got to ask with, um, with all of this, are you, and I, I have an opinion on this, but I want to ask the crowd, are you upset if Kawhi leaves, or do you go, you know what? Thanks, man. Really appreciated it. Heck of a year. You'll always be a legend here. Which one is it? Second one? Second one. Second one. Yeah. So we're okay with that. Because I wondered about that. Because I, I, like, our standards in, in Canada, when it comes to a sport like this, I think hockey's a little bit different. But, you know, if, it was, if it's basketball, if it's baseball, um, we expect that players just don't want to be here. Right? We expect yes. that. We expect that, like, like, I mean, I think was it Patrick Patterson was in an interview, and he was like, I guess he was crossing the border over Lake Ontario, and it was the middle of winter, and he'd just been traded here, and he said, the second I get off this plane, I am calling my agent, and I'm saying, get me the hell out of here, and he ended up playing here four years, and he loved it, and I just wondered, like, I don't think Kawhi hates it here by any stretch. I don't know what Kawhi thinks. I don't think anyone does, but... Apples. Can't, yeah. <laughs> Red <laughs> apples. Apple time. Apple time. <laughs> <laughs> but I just wonder, like, if, if, if that were to happen in Boston... If you are a Celtic for a year and you win a championship and then you leave, you up and leave. Like, remember what happened when Ray Allen left the Celtics, mm-hmm. right? And, how, and went to go and join LeBron. And they, they hate him. They still won't talk to him. Where it's like, here it's so like, weird. hey, thanks for the championship. That was great. All right. That was awesome. Okay, we're good for the next 25 years. We're okay. The bar is a little closer to the ground here. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It is a bit weird that way. Like, they've gone Boston- I mean, poor one out for Boston, everyone. They've gone, what is it, months, weeks <laughs> without a championship. Will the drought ever end? Oh, my goodness. It's so terrible for that. But, like, uh, yeah, for Boston, they hate you forever if you leave. With Toronto, it's like, yeah, I know. That's what you do. Yeah, like, we applaud Vince Carter, who actively quit on us on the court. Yeah. Standing O. Yeah. Standing <laughs> I, I, I was there. I gave him standing O. I, and I would, too. <laughs> what is that? Why do we do that? He was one of us yeah. for and a couple of years, yeah. and then he didn't want to be one of us. And little Jesse <laughs> was sitting there in his pajamas, you know, when right. he was a kid going, dunk it! <laughs> I, I also had a Vince Carter poster in my room. Yes! I'm yeah. going to cheer for this Well, dude. and what's amazing is that, like, he didn't want to be here so bad that he went to New Jersey. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, oh, sorry, New Jersey, but, I mean, I mean, there's spots. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> I you believe I you. Mean? Like, I believe you for sure. So Sorry, New Jersey listeners. <laughs> but I guess it's just it's just a very interesting psychology we have here, where it's like we're glad to have you. While you know, thank you, Roger Clemens. Thank you, Josh Donaldson. Thank you, like to these guys who've come in and done a great job. But we expect you to go eventually. Yeah, but like, okay, Josh Donaldson at very least uh, got to put on goggles at some point. Like Roger Clemens, I, I don't care what individual trophies he won. He won Cy Young two years in a row. It was similar to Kawhi in the in the way that he just dominated, like two Cy yeah. Youngs back to back, and then just dips. Yeah. Bye. Yeah. Yeah. yeah what the, I think the deal was if he signed here and they didn't make the playoffs two years in a row, then Gord Ash promised to trade him, mm-hmm. and so we did. Uh, <laughs> it it changed it changed like the wind for me uh, when Kawhi hit the shot. We all all I have to do is say the shot, and we all know what I'm talking about. And I love that we have one of those moments finally. Uh, everyone was like, you know what? No matter what happens, it's good. And then they're down 2 nothing to Milwaukee, and I'm like, eh, I don't know about that. <laughs> and then they beat Milwaukee, and hey, first trip to the finals, no matter what happens, if he leaves, we're good. 
And then the second they go down at all against Golden State, I'm like, ah, uh, no. <laughs> Especially when they were up 3-1, yeah. because then my Uber Toronto kicked in. Yeah. Oh, my, okay, I know it's only happened to one team before, but we're going to be number two. <laughs> oh, my God, and it's number two, and Kawhi, and Skip Bayless is going to have a field day, and we're <laughs> never going to hear the end of this. You should have heard the, inter the internal monologue. I hear it every podcast. Yeah, you do. Yeah, my internal monologue is very external. Is this victory more memorable than the 3-1 loss? Say that again. The Bruin, the Bruins lost. Oh, oh the four one. So, so, sorry, oh, four Jesse, one. Four it one. was far more embarrassing <laughs> than three one. <laughs> sorry, oh. four one. Yeah. Is this well, is is this more memorable, the victory than the devastating loss? Okay, so you, in, hold on. in your mind, hold your answer because I want to get your answer. Okay? Okay, yeah, okay, hold your answer, Steve. I want yours first. I'm sure that is the way my therapist will spin it. Yes. <laughs> so w repeat the question one more time. So. Is the 4-1 loss to Boston more memorable in your mind than the Raptors NBA championship victory? So, yay? Victory? All hands up for yay? Oh, yeah. look a few. Wow. Is, yeah. And then nay. Give me the nays. And you can speak up, too, because we're an audio podcast. It's okay. Well, look at all the hands of liars. It's about, it's <laughs> about <laughs> split, but... I think, I think it's erased it for me. Yeah? It's erased it for me. I, I, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Oh. I, uh, thank you. <laughs> I think... Don't applaud lying. I... <laughs> You know, it, it, this is so stupid, and I and you guys will laugh at me for this. I did anyone else watch the finals and go? I sure hope the Leafs are watching this. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and it's not because I'm not trying to be insulting. I think you learn from people who've done it. Once you see that it's possible, and I think as Toronto fans, we needed to believe that it could actually happen here. And when you see the poise of that team when they when they I think they won Game Two and Game Three. And they're like emotionless, just zombies walking back to the room like we're just we're focused four wins or nothing. And I think with the Toronto Maple Leafs, those players are definitely watching. They're at the games. We've seen the pictures and you have to think that they're picking something up. You have to think that it's like, OK, it's there's got to be something learned from watching that because I certainly feel a little yeah. different after it. Maybe My anxiety about Toronto sports has sort of gone away. Maybe now they'll control the unending charisma of Austin Matthews. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe now they'll get him to calm down a little bit. I don't no, mean that, but no, you know. <laughs> you know no, I but they are jumpy. We, they're, sure they're a bit jumpy. For sure, 100%. And we've, we've, you know, we've ragged on people for, you know, say, oh, they celebrated too big. And remember there was the thing about oh, – Blue Jays, you won a wild card game. And they were like, you won the game. They to got get cigars. Into the yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, Champagne. We, we did it. <laughs> like, giant, like they're on a, like a, like a air cruiser, like George Bush. No. Baseball's it's, weird that way. It, yeah, it's, it's yeah, they super celebrate weird. every single Everything. round victory. Because it is a real accomplishment to even make the playoffs in baseball. It's eight it teams is. out of 30, yeah. right? Yeah. That is a big deal. You play 162 games, so it kind of is an equalizer. Like, that should actually be the champion if you're doing it correctly. After 162 <laughs> games, you have a champagne celebration for more games. <laughs> exactly. Even more. Um, no, but uh, even though I love celebrating, uh, and last night was obviously fun, Watching them, again, look like robotic zombies after uh, going up 3-1 was weirdly comforting. Mm. Like, they, they are the assassins. They are Mike Ehrmantraut from Better Call Saul or Breaking Bad. I don't know. For some reason, I, because I'm Does very... anyone get that reference? Anyone? <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, right, I'm Breaking Bad. Oh, yeah, Breaking Bad. It's a really niche show. I just want to make sure people are with us. <laughs> no one's seen it. No, um, Sometimes you have to give context to the person, even, even if it is a popular show. I, I, I'm having, sorry, I need to give you the context. Thank the context you. is I watch shows with characters like that who are really stoic and badly want to be them because I'm extraordinarily not them yeah. on any level. So seeing the Raptors as this just group of assassins made me feel so good inside until the ball was in Steph Curry's hands and then I pooped myself. <laughs> And so, so did they a little bit. Danny so, Green especially. Um, so this is so we're going to pivot back to hockey here. Except for, actually, quickly tell the Masai story. Do you guys know this? You heard this story? Oh. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. For anybody that hasn't heard it, the president of the Raptors almost got arrested after the championship last night. And, like, crazy. still might? Like, I, I don't know. So explain it quickly for anybody that hasn't heard it, because this is a crazy story. Well, I consumed it the way anyone else in the room who has heard it uh, consumed the story. But basically what happened uh, – after the game was, uh, there was there was some sort of scuffle. 
uh, and then Masai got brought onto the court, and they hoisted the trophy. So what the scuffle was, supposedly, and the videos came out afterward, was Masai, like, got into, like, a shoving match with a, not a security guard at Oracle, a cop, like an actual police officer, a sheriff, I think. Um, and uh, <laughs> Kyle Lowry basically had to drag him onto the court, and they're... I think they're considering pressing charges, mm -hmm. like for battery of an officer or something and, and like that. And it was because he didn't have his press credentials? The, the cop said that he didn't have his credentials, but there's videos of him behind the scenes and even during the scrum with the press credential in his hand. Ooh. So I have no idea. I, and I mean, good move on the guy for not pursuing it any further. Yeah. <laughs> can you imagine? Well, I mean, yes, I can. You know, well, it's the United actually, States right yeah, now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I guess you can. Absolutely, I can. And I, I just think if you're the Oakland police, this is not where you want to go. Yeah, maybe sit that this one This is out maybe dog. not the yeah. PR move that you want. This is not a good move for you right now. A crazy story, but it will be interesting to see because it's still up in the air. Mm -hmm. Still developing. And the watch bomb. Yeah, so the th what I love about this, you guys saw this too, Mas Masai Ujiri it might get an offer from the Wizards for maybe $10 million. Mm -hmm. That wasn't a bomb. No. I might offer him $10 million bucks too. I probably won't, but I might. <laughs> like, what is that? That's not a report. And then there was a tweet I was reading while you guys were doing smart guy things in Henry's, and I was just sort of there, um, where they said that report was false. So well, who even knows? Well, it's the offseason. So the rumor was that he was going to get ownership stake in the Washington Wizards. Oh, wow. So that would be part of the $10 million package. You know what I learned at NBA Finals Media Day? Masai's not the GM. No, Bobby Webster is. <laughs> Bobby yeah. Webster. I legitimately did not know that. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I thought he was there the you GM. Go. Uh, no, not at all. I'm glad I didn't interview him then. I would have been like, hey, I'm here with Raptors GM Masai Uchiri. <laughs> and then I would have promptly got kicked out by Eric Smith. Or, or assassinated. Somebody. Or that. Yeah. I mean, maybe. <laughs> Believe in Toronto. Believe in yourselves. Except for you. Get the hell out of the building right now. So, uh, believe it or not, guys, there was a trade today. Did you see this? Yeah. 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 Radko Gudis finally on the move for the ghost of Matt Niskanen. The trade was bad, Gudis. Okay. You see, so. because <laughs> it's like his name. but so, it's it's, so, explain the trade. The trade is what? It's uh, Matt Niskanen for Radko Gudis, and I believe... There's salary uh, retention. Straight up. Uh, well, yeah. So, Matt Niskanen makes... I think it's... Uh, Five. This is weird because you guys are here and you can correct me in real time. Uh, he makes a hair under six. I want to say he makes five and three quarters. The David Clarkson special, I think. Um, and uh, Radko Gudis, I think, makes three something. And we only talked about him for several months coming to the Leafs, uh, even though that never happened. So I should know. So upon hearing about that trade, you would think that Niskanen is the one who's going to have a little bit of salary retained. And apparently it's Gudis at, I want to say, 30%. Do you want to read it? Flyers retaining 30% of Gudis's cap hit and salary means Washington has cleared about $3.4 million in cap space as a result of this trade. Why, why do good teams get help from bad teams? That's a thing that happens, right? That's a thing that happens. And we saw it. I, 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 I know the answer. We continue to see that. We saw it with the Blackhawks for years. It's like, hey, you guys just won the cup. Let me help you with your bad cap situation, and then I will take your mediocre overpaid player. In this particular case, Radko Gudis, you can make the argument that, A, he's cleaned up his game a little. B, he's <laughs> actually a serviceable NHL player. Um, and Matt Niskanen, like I said, is not the Matt Niskanen we remember from the Penguins and, and, the, and the recent Caps runs. Well, hockey scouting like always takes five years to acclimate to, oh, he's bad now. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like it's crazy because it's not – you could make the argument that they're about, at this point, the same player. There's, there's a team that is in the same division as Milan Lucic's team that wants him. How? Yeah. What are you thinking? And for those of you who don't know, you've heard about the, the Lucic for Louis Erickson rumors. And here's the best part. Lucic Puglia Yarby for Erickson. Yeah. yeah. So Puglia Yarby might have to be considered in that, which I think is just amazing. Good on the Canucks for being like, yeah, we know you need this. I mean... Yes and no. <laughs> it's oh my god. There, that's the so Canucks strange. every time they take a step forward, like they they draft so well. Every time they take a step forward, July first hits. And or the hand Jim Benning a microphone. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> they draft they draft well. They scout well. They do everything well. But then they they seem to need this thing called toughness. And I don't know. Where like, The same thing with Lucic in Edmonton. I don't know where he fits in on the Canucks. Just like I didn't know where Louis Erickson fit in. I don't think – did, did Benning sign that deal too? That was three years. Yeah. yeah so it was yes. three years ago. According to – I'm excited. Oh, are you, are you a Canucks fan? 
Yes. No. Oh. <laughs> There's a few Canucks fans in here. Yeah. So I don't understand where, like, where, what does that give them? Oh, oh so we've moved on. Well, yeah. Just I mean, <laughs> I don't know. What, what else do you want to hear about Radko Gudis? Do you well, because I have a theory. Oh, okay. Who's the GM of the Flyers now? Uh, Paul Fenton. No, Not Chuck Fenton. Fletcher. Chuck Fletcher. Paul Fenton is the GM of Minnesota. This is the stink of the Minnesota Wild spreading. I thought I was over my hatred of them. Turns out I'm not. <laughs> no, now I'm just laughing at how dumb they are. <laughs> they are. Well, and, and their alumni. Can you look up the Flyers cap for a second? A sure. Alumni. Um, because I, I want to know if Andrew Mc, uh, McDonald's done. So the they, They've got like $8 million in defense that aren't going to play for their team this year. Yeah, the theory is they're going to try to buy him One out. One more year, $5 million. So Andrew McDonald's $5 million, and then they retain 30% on Radko Gudis, who makes what, $3 million? Three and a half? Uh, around there. Well, so Jesse's, you're looking at Jesse's a $6 million, million dollar player team. that doesn't play for your team. That's a million. That's unbelievable. I don't understand. I don't, I don't get it. Now, I had a theory just as soon as Jesse pulled up the number. Because there's a player rumored to be on the block right now. Who's that? Who's up on the block? Well, Who's there's a couple the goalies. Block? There's uh, oh. Garrett Sparks. I don't know if you've heard of him. Here we go. <laughs> and there's one James Reimer. <laughs> Woo! We have a James Reimer T right in front of us. That oh. is the correct oh, yeah. Turn around, turn around. Turn Show around. the camera. Yeah, yeah there hey. you go. All right, there's the camera over there. The Show camera. that camera. Yeah. Hey. There you go. All right. That is the correct response, everybody. He makes, I believe it's, I want to say it's around three and a half three million half. dollars. That's what the Flyers got. Oh, you think no. they're going to go up? He might be a good starter for or, them. Or be better than what they have. No, no. He, he gets to be a guide for Carter Hart and teach him how to be a good, wholesome boy. Oh, good. That's good. I like that. And then all of a sudden, imagine if the Flyers go face. The Flyers go baby face. Oh, they're like the good guy. Yeah. They trade Claude Drew and he could get have said someone. Good guy, but he, no, went, he said face. face. I got to use wrestling terminology. They have Reimer and Carter Hart is like this altar boy, and they trade Claude Drew for like you know a nice person <laughs> or something. It could be unbelievable. Could be crazy. <laughs> I'm just saying. Now I I that was all just a large work to get to. I want the Leafs to get Reimer back. <laughs> well, they are shopping Garrett Sparks. That's the report today. Now uh, Garrett Sparks, whether you loved his. Uh, his appearances last year, or you didn't, and I'm going to assume that you didn't. Um, no offense to him personally, but it's it, it wasn't good enough last year. He makes 750 grand, which is 200 grand under league men, which means if you send him down to the minors, no, to, isn't league men? No, no. It's oh, sorry, it's 925. You can't, can't make under no, league men. No, but the what's the um, entry level? Entry level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you send him down, it's a cheap deal. You're saving 200 grand. On the cap, the way the cap No, no, works. it's just completely buried. Yeah. If you send him down, yeah. So, I guess with him, I, I kind of look at it and I go, okay, so Freddie Anderson's going to play 60 games. No. Oh, who Which are you is how get? it shouldn't be. Right. It's not how it should be. But what's your other option? James Reimer <laughs> comes back. They retain half his salary. And I die in a pool of happiness. <laughs> what number does he wear? Oh. Doesn't matter. Does Austin Matthews oh. give him his number back? Are you ready? Are you ready? <laughs> yes. Are you ready? Ten. In he honor of you? Yes. <laughs> Which, by the way, was in honor of Alex Steen, who used to be your favorite yeah, player. No, no. We forget. <laughs> if he wears ten, we forget that whole story, and he'll be the first person to wear a number in honor of his son. He's going to have to get like a restraining order if he comes uh, back to yeah. town. No, he is not. <laughs> <laughs> no, he is not. Yeah, let's let's ignore the fact that the one and only time I met him, I was like, I noticed you were drinking blue Gatorade today. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I love him so much. And I, if, if the Panthers do want to retain half his salary, why wouldn't you look at it? I mean, you, dude, okay, if he's as bad as he was last year, okay. Garrett Sparks was... Okay, okay that's what the same sense. First of, all, first of all, okay. <laughs> Second of all, Garrett Sparks was really bad. At least Reimer is adorable. Okay, and how about that? So we get a more expensive, older, adorable guy no, who yes. does the same thing? Yes. Is that what you guys want? Yes. No. Okay. Come on. Really? Listen, there's better options of a – no, no, there aren't. So, no, no. So, sorry. Let me correct myself right there. But under $2 million for a goalie who has a track record of success, yeah. even though he had a bad season. And a 900 a save risk. percentage. Man, 900 would have made him a Vesna candidate on the Sharks. <laughs> you know how badly they want That is not the bar they, we want to set. Yeah. The Sharks we want to aim higher than the that. The Sharks are the Stanley Cup champions right now if they 
keep James Reimer. <laughs> Remember, they used to have him because the Leafs Asshole. traded him there, and it was, I don't know, man. I didn't really think they needed to do it. I know Freddie Anderson's a good goalie, but <laughs> sorry. I went to a place there. I went to a place. That was like the most, that was the most ridiculous day in my life, the day Reimer was traded. Why? Because I don't I, even remember it, to be honest with you. I because I went. I don't to, I don't like. I remember the trade deadline that year or whatever, and it's like, yeah, we got a couple second round picks. How did we fleece the Sharks? That's great. Rogers sent me to Montreal to see the post trade deadline Leafs, the year they were Ooh. going for last place. Is this the horror check year? Oh baby, no, no, the year they finished last, the Parento year. Oh wait, why were you in Montreal though? To see to the watch Leafs them. play Just the Habs. to watch them? They yeah. sent him on the road to see the worst team in the league. Yeah. But they play here. <laughs> but listen, <laughs> I didn't turn them down. Uh, why no, see, <laughs> here's the thing, Jesse. Not only were they bad, they were worse. Ah. So you had to see that in person, right? Ah. Jesse, all I know is they offered me a free thing. Okay. And I'm physically incapable of turning that down. So they sent me to a uh, free thing. Mm -hmm. And I get to the hotel and I'm like, oh, it's going to be cool. Uh, going to watch a hockey game tonight. I'll go out and get a smoked meat sandwich. Oh, my God, I left my laptop on the plane. So that was a really bad feeling. So I'm talking to Air Canada constantly, and it turns out they discovered my laptop just before the plane took off. So Andrew Berkshire actually picked me up and dropped me off at the airport so I could get my laptop. Which is way out in the – isn't that in the middle of it nowhere was in Montreal? Not, it was not close. And uh, on my way to the airport with just the biggest feeling of relief – the Leafs have traded James Reimer. Oh. I felt so sad. Do you know, I would have given away my laptop to, to keep <laughs> James Reimer. Can we put that towards his he contract? He free agency 20 games later. No. <laughs> no. He would have stayed. No, he wouldn't. He have stayed. <laughs> no, he, he would return. That's the new campaign. Here's the thing. He Florida returned. way overpaid for him. Mm -hmm. No. And they thought, and, and I get it, like based on what he had had, he was worth the comparable number. But he hasn't backed that number up. He yeah. way underperformed for them listen, for three years. Listen, he's no, yeah, yeah. I'm looking at his numbers so right now. That's pretty rough. But listen, <laughs> no, he was a 920 that one time. Listen, he's the one player. He's the one player in the league I'm completely irrational for. You guys have an irrational player? Yell it out. James Reimer. James Reimer. Really? Very good. Anybody else? Matthew. Matthews. Well, Matthews. Well, that's Matthews. Good I'd yeah. say that's okay. quite rational. Creative. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's that's right. Yeah. Cody, Cody Franzen, Franzen is a popular what one. What is with that Twitter and Cody Franzen? Yeah. Cody Akavo. Cody Really? Cody Franzen is morning like show host Cody Akavo. Yes. That's right. That's right. St. Louis Blues alumni. I wonder yes. if he gets a ring. <laughs> uh, Cody Franzen is like the Futurama like of, uh, of hockey players because everyone thinks he's coming back. Like all, <laughs> all the stats guys are like, no, if we... If we send enough messages, our team is going to sign him. It's like, dude, he's been playing in Magnitogorsk or something for like three years. I don't think he's no, coming back, No, he's not back, coming man. back. He doesn't – here's the thing with Cody Franz, and he had good comparable numbers, but he doesn't have the foot speed. He can't keep up. No, he's, he's a Civil War cannon. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it was, he, he packed a punch, and then you have to wheel him across exactly. the battlefield, and exactly. it was a bit of a struggle. So the asking price for Nikita Zaitsev, are you guys ready for this? Have you seen this? So defensemen that can play in the NHL. This is hilarious. Prospect and a pick. That's <laughs> the asking price. <laughs> and I saw a tweet that I fully agreed with, and I forget who, who tweeted this, but uh, so excuse me for lifting it. But they Our show should be called I Forget Who Tweeted yeah, This. Yeah, but <laughs> because we see a lot of Twitter. Yes. We spend too much time on it. If the Leafs got one of those things, I would, I would literally make the statue to Kyle Dubas myself. Oh like, my I would be shocked if they did, and yet somehow right-handed defensemen right now are worth so much – that a guy who, you know what, on certain teams, in certain situations, I actually think Nikita Zaitsev would be quite useful. Like if you, you take him and you put him in Edmonton, if they have a anybody who is good on the right side in Edmonton that can run a power play with those weapons, with, you don't need to be great. You just need to get the puck to Dreisaitl and McDavid. That's it. And Nugent Hopkins. He's, he's such a strange player because I feel like he was what he was supposed to be in his first year. Because they played him on the power play. Yeah, and then Babcock decided, I'm going to make Nikita Zaitsev Roman Polak. <laughs> and, you know, even though he's very not Roman Polak. So, I don't know. I have a feeling he might actually be a much better whatever he is next uh, than a Leaf. But so, are you guys ready for anything? <laughs> oh. Are Anything. you ready to have your face rubbed in it, though, when whatever fan base ends up getting him goes, see, he was really good. You Leaf fans are just the worst. 
Are you ready for that? To have Nikita Zaitsev shoved in your face? Adam, I was, I was first of all, phrasing. Second of all, <laughs> I was born ready for that. Okay. It's always, man, the Alex Dean trade was 11 years ago. And it was a bunch of, I got a bunch of Blues fans going, ha, Leafs really goofed up. And it's like, dude, we beat you to that. <laughs> we know. What, what, what is, what people have um, gotten wrong since the Leafs have gotten decent is all of their criticisms of the team, we beat them to by at least five years. Yeah, we were saying it, right? Yes. We knew. Yeah. Yes. That was, that was one of the first, not that trade, the Tuka Rass trade, which was also very relevant mm -hmm. uh, in these playoffs to Stanley Cup final. That was the... When I, I just saw somebody exhale deeply there, yeah. by the way. <laughs> yeah. It's you're, you're, when you're younger, I think you think your team can do no wrong. Yeah. And that was the first trade where I remember being like, I think this might suck. <laughs> I, well, you know, I, it's funny because you there's you come to that realization at the same time that you realize your parents aren't perfect, and uh, it kind of yeah. shatters your world. You know what I'm talking about? You realize, like, and I've been thinking a lot about this lately, obviously, because you know I'm I'm probably yeah ten years away from my my kid realizing that I don't know what I'm talking about or what I'm doing. That is, uh, you think very highly of yeah. yourself, sir. <laughs> but it's about that time that you start to go, well, uh, objectively, Dad, that's not exactly how that should go, right? Like, you start to think for yes. yourself. Yes, And I remember that trade, and uh, and then the Lee Stempniak trade, and I remember when Lee Stempniak got traded from the Leafs, when he was moved on. To the Coyotes for a player who didn't exist. Oh, is that what it was? For a guy named Matt Jones, who hadn't played in, like, over a calendar year. So that's interesting, because I remember the Toronto Sun headline that day, and they're like, oh, no, not Stempy, as in, like, very sarcastic. Oh, no, we lost him. And I said, it's not about that. It's about Alex Steen. Yes. It's about, and, and what, did, wasn't it Steen and Koliakovo? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, Like, Adam. we lost them both. See? Toronto fans don't forget. <laughs> they know exactly. Oh, hey, what's going to be better and uh, what's going to be more prevalent in your mind? The championship or the scars that you got from Boston? The scars. The scars. Always the scars. <laughs> That's how it is, man. When you, from what you've heard, um, obviously Patrick Marlowe, we've all seen his house is up for sale. His family's moving back to California. It wasn't a fit. He leaves. Um, and he was great for the two years he was here. Like you, you can't not love the two years that he gave you. And Well, it, well, it turns out, I mean, listen, I didn't love the way he was used. But you can't fault Patrick Marlowe's contribution to the team. No. No, and not at all. So my question is, what does the deal for him moving out look like? What do you think, honestly, in your honest opinion, and this is just a wild stab in the dark, what does that look like? How do you move that? Are you retaining? Where's it, where's it going? What, what are you, you know, you have time at home to think about these things. Yes. Yes. Um, I, I think... I mean, it's sort of the first team that was thrown out there, but the Kings seem to make the most sense. I, I think what we both, or what we all thought when we heard Zaitsev was potentially leaving and Marlowe was potentially leaving was it would be sort of problem for problem deals. You know what I mean? Now we, we've gotten a little bit spoiled. because what we might actually get something for Zaitsev. Do these guys think he's good? That's amazing. Okay. Um, with Marlowe, I, I think there's, there's no escaping that. They're not going to get – can you imagine they get, like, an amazing player for Patrick Marlowe or something but like that? But does that mean we have to take two years of somebody – Yeah, I think it might so – it might be something like does that Does that name, name mean Kovalchuk? No. No. No, well, I, I don't think it means Kovalchuk. Uh, I don't know that – I'm serious. I don't think that they want – I don't think they want him anymore. I don't think he wants to play there anymore. Like, Willie Desjardins came in, and I know Willie's not the coach anymore, and you were – you were right to say this at the time. Why would I ever listen to him? Why would you listen if to I'm Willie really Kovalchuk? But his, he there's sat people, him. There's people he in this room with, yeah. with better resumes than the guy. Do we like, know why they signed him? It seems so perplexing at the time, I think and it still doesn't make sense. They thought, there's no question. If you look at, go back and look at what the LA Kings did last summer. Yeah. The LA Kings thought that they were a playoff team. The yes. LA things, Kings thought and continue to think for some reason that Jonathan Quick is anything other than a maybe top 15 goaltender. They think he's a top 10. Uh, they think that they, they were coming off, riding high off the Drew Doughty signing because here's the thing. Drew Doughty didn't have an agent, right? So they, had, they got to sign Drew Doughty for a number that is fair for Drew Doughty, but they didn't have to do all the upfront payments like the Leafs do with Tavares and Matthews, right? They didn't have to. So it's, it's not a buyout-proof contract. They can get out of it if they need to. They thought that they were riding high and that they were a goal scorer away, and they thought, you know what? We don't have to trade for the, the guy. We don't have to really get anybody. We lost out on Tavares, so 
let's let's give Kovalchuk a shot. What the hell? It's three years. Let it ride. And it boys it bit them. But yeah. I wonder. You put Kovalchuk, and call me crazy for this, but I actually think this is the. Fish. I will. Uh, you put Kovalchuk on the Leafs with that power play. Who cares what he plays the rest on on five on five? Just put him on the power play and set him up for shots. Him on the power play is intriguing, for sure. With his shot? Yeah, but I I don't want. <sighs> The, the thing with Marlowe is I don't want someone coming back for the same amount of money. Right, uh, and they make about the same. Yeah, yeah. out. So you out. need. So I want that money out. So, so it's got to be shorter. It's got to be longer term, shorter amount, or smaller amount of money. I think that might that might be the so case. So who's on the Kings that, that could do that? Uh, the guy I was sort of looking at was uh, Jeff Carter. Uh, he's sort of intriguing a little bit. Five, uh, a little five under more five years? point three. No, three. Three more years. Three more years, which is still bad, and he's thirty four and very broken. Um, Fi- almost he's, a, he's, five an L- he's almost an LTIR case. Yeah, almost five point nine. Also making three or um, money for three more years is Dustin Brown. Uh, he's. I mean, he scored a bunch of points this past season. I. I don't. Somebody know. had to. It's. It's. It's a very. <laughs> I mean, uh, what was it? Ryan Dezingle had twenty something goals with the with the Sens and uh, had two yeah. with the Columbus Blue Jackets. You, you know what this feels like? It feels like the Leafs and Kings are on a date where their friends set them up. And they don't know what to talk so it's about. It's a bit awkward. Don't know what to do with my hands. Yeah. <laughs> so, do you like Kovalchuk's? No. <laughs> okay. Is there not a scenario where they just give Marlowe away and they just? Who, but who takes him? Yeah. And they throw in some picks, maybe, and then it's just we take the cap space. Man, I would. Because here's the thing: in life, the most valuable thing you have is time. In the NHL, the most valuable thing you have is cap space. Flexibility. Flexibility. Yeah. Keeping the doors open, right? Like what we can we can do whatever we need to do. I agree with you. That's what I would try to do. But I don't see unless it's unless you're dealing with the Coyotes and if you're the Coyotes, you're asking prices sky high. I'd start with a first round pick because what the hell? Um, <laughs> and the Leafs don't even have one this year. Um, I wonder. I really truly wonder if they haven't tried that. But I or or yeah. if you're Kyle Dubas and you're and you're trying to be a negotiator, you go no no no. Patrick Marlowe's got value. I mean, look at what no. he's asking for for Nikita Zaitsev. No, it's if, if I'm on the phone, if I'm on the other end of the phone, I go, he sold his house, Kyle. <laughs> I watch the playoffs, Kyle. I have cable. I have I have Sportsnet now, Kyle. Um, it's it almost seems like it, it's like it's like you put a, a dryer up for sale on Kijiji for free, but they have to pick it up. But you live in a neighborhood where no one has a truck. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that that's sort of the, the yeah. cap uh, equivalent of it all. I really I don't know how it's going to work out, but the Kings have enough messy deals on there that I think there might be a match there. I mean, they also have good players making money or decent players. Like Tyler Toffoli is the name that was brought up, and he's only got the one year, and mm-hmm. he's not that old. I don't know. It's not as – you see how I'm talking about it, though? It's not as fun of a conversation as Nikita Zaitsev. No. We're no. All, where we're all just, like, sitting on our hands like – Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> He's so happen. great. He's so great. Well, a- every time someone tweets about how bad he is, I'm like, don't blow this for me. <laughs> they oh, might like, be reading this. Like NHL GMs are going to listen to hockey Twitter. Come oh, on. No, no, no. Yeah, exactly. Bim Jennings for sure. Oh, my God. It's true. He might have a summer where he gets Lucic and Zaitsev. Mm-hmm. And maybe Tyler Myers, too. Hell yeah. Let it ride. He may Bim. overpay for Tyler Myers. Who doesn't love Bim? So um, I got to ask you, this whole book thing. Hmm? You guys, you guys read the book, right? Which one? <laughs> you guys read the book? Yeah, 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 yeah. everybody. Yeah, Thoughts, my, my book like, over yeah. there. Thumbs up, thumbs up. Yeah, my book's in the corner. Uh, that That's me on the cover with the bikini. It's called <laughs> Namaste. <laughs> Steve's uh, going to talk about his mindfulness. Yeah, for sure. And uh, kale and things of that <laughs> nature. <laughs> so I have to ask you from your perspective, because we've all read the book, right? I just wanted to check. Everybody, Everybody's reading, right? I did the audio book. Yeah, that one. That's the one. Oh, you just bought you it, bought so you haven't it. read it yet. Oh, oh okay. there you go. That'll, All do right. it. That'll do it for sure. How has it been <laughs> for you? You you take your story, and and I don't know if anybody looks at it this way, but when you tell stories or when you write down stories, you kind of go, oh, my God, like, what if no one cares? <laughs> right? That's the thing. Like, you do a show like this, or you write something, you post something, and that's something that you do all the time. Yeah. And there was a time, and this isn't an insult, but there was a time when no one cared. Oh, there for w- sure. Wait, when you like your first few seasons, you're just gaining a couple listeners here and there. For a lot of people, that's right now. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that guy but fall asleep. So what was it? <laughs> <laughs> so what was it like putting it out there? And what's it been like seeing the reaction? 
It um, when I first found out they were putting the book in the printer, I had like a mild panic attack because I'm like, oh my god, now it exists like in a hard copy, and it's just sitting there in a in a store. It's it's something of mine that I had no control of and like couldn't even see. So when people started tweeting me photos a month and a half ahead of time, mind you. <laughs> By the way, how how great was that? Who got their book early? Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> Indigo great. Chapters was just like March 19th. That's hilarious. <laughs> and just put it on sale in February. <laughs> no, no. Believe me, I appreciate yeah. it. <laughs> um, but, but I'm getting tweets like a month and a half ahead of time from like Victoria, BC. Like, hey, man, just picked up your book. <laughs> I, I, I died a little bit inside because I was just... Really hoping people like, and I what I loved about it too was Steve's recording the audiobook, and they weren't sure whether or not they were going to do that. And we Jesse and I had to take them aside and go, "No, you do a podcast. People are used to listening to your voice. Oh, th- that you was must a- do an audiobook. You didn't have to convince well, me. Yeah, it was just no. kind of like push harder. But yeah. what was amazing was you're reading the st- you're reading the book, and you found a spelling mistake in it, right? No, oh, somebody else <laughs> found it, right? Well, yeah, so people tweeted me spelling mistakes. Yeah. I haven't found a new one which, for a very long time. Which, by the way, if, we got them all. if you're those people, you couldn't have let that slide, huh? <laughs> it's just a mistake, man. <laughs> what are you going to go through every book and go cross out star? What I meant to say was... Yeah, no, there was... The, the, one, the one where I found, I think it was three, was uh, the Filatov uh, party chapter. Uh, won't spoil it for Sir over here in the dinosaur mm-hmm. shirt who just bought the book, <laughs> but um, that chapter, it it was weird. So like leading leading up to the deadline of the book, I was still, you would think for your own life, you you wouldn't have to do that much research, right? But I had to, c- like cut and paste a huge swath of that chapter with another one because I realized it's out of order. Oh, you yeah. know there was there were the because you remember things. things out of order. Yeah, a little bit. Um, it was it was weird organizing my life. That was much. it a weird experience reliving your own life when you're writing it down? Very. Yeah. Very because uh, I think I think things happen to you or you experience something, and you have an emotion about it, whether it's positive or negative or both, and then you carry that with you for a long time. But it wasn't until I got to experience it again that I had different feelings about it and then i started to feel uh, well depending on the story either stupid or relieved or or whatever because i had a new perspective on it and i felt silly for having those feelings for half a decade or a decade do you reread the book as like a third person looking at the life of this guy named steve dangle yes i had to do that a few (laughs) times this spring because i was like you're right i you're right steve i should calm down (laughs) 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 i I shouldn't take things so seriously so what we're gonna do here guys is uh, i want you to put up your hand if you got a question this is the press conference this is officially it uh we don't have the intro we're not running it uh Uh, running the intro um i'll put it in you'll put it in jesse will jesse will edit that in but what i'm gonna do (laughs) for so everybody listening and watching can hear is i'm gonna repeat your question so I'm, mo- I'm mostly telling you that so that he doesn't start answering the question right away. Glad you asked. So, so <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure so, the answer is Jeff Carter. So I'm going to ask you to put up your hand. We'll get to everybody. Uh, stand up, state your name, that sort of thing. Cool? Everybody good with that? Stand up, state your name. I think my thing just became uh, unplugged for a second. All right. Questions? Anybody? Anybody? Okay. At the back. Your name. My name's Rob. I'm from London, Ontario, but I'm living out in Mount Pearl, Newfoundland, and I know that everybody's wondering when you're headed to The Rock, man. Rob wants to know, from London, living out in Newfoundland, wants to know when you're headed to The Rock. I am learning a lot about the publishing industry, (laughs) Uh, and it is a wild ride that I knew nothing about. So there there uh, there was money allocated for like one trip somewhere. And the flight to Vancouver for the draft made a lot of sense. Uh, one, because it's Vancouver. Like, we have a lot of listeners out in Vancouver. Surprisingly. Yeah, and it's the draft. So I wanted an excuse to go to another draft because I don't know if you've heard this on the podcast before. I went to the 2014 draft in Philadelphia. <laughs> I feel like that should be a new bingo swear uh, along with uh, Ferrari cake. Um, but I have been talking to people about uh, – there was one idea we had about doing like a uh, – What's the order? You would know. You lived out there. I think it's Calgary, Red Deer, Edmonton. Mm -hmm. Maybe do that little roadie and maybe do like a Halifax, St. John's sort of thing. Might do. Throw Moncton in there too because Moncton's pretty close. You can drive that in a couple hours. I I was told by an East Coaster. I was was consulting with an East Coaster and there was one 
city in New Brunswick. I can't remember which one it is. It might have been Moncton, and they referred to it as Satan's uh, okay. an- anus. <laughs> <laughs> so Don't say that. <laughs> I did not say that, <laughs> but they did. But no, I think I think if I'm if I'm out there, I you might should as well go to Moncton. Somewhere it's not that it's Brunswick. not that far, right? You guys, anybody any East Coasters here? Moncton to Halifax isn't that far. No East Coasters. Not okay, that far. How do we have a room with city. no East Coasters? This is a first. That's crazy. They're everywhere. Man, if this if this show was in Oshawa, half the room would be East Coasters. Really? Everyone, it's the it's the Oshawa version of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders uniform. Everyone's got like uh, the outline of Newfoundland on the back of their truck. <laughs> And it's a truck for sure. Ab- has to be. Yes. Tru- truck nuts included. Yeah. I, uh, I really I want to go back to the rock. Man, if I could incorporate some sort of George Street Festival little book thing, kill two birds with one stone. Steve would just like to get drunk on his trip. There we go. There you go. Uh, next question. Next Nailed question. It. We got a front row. Your name. Uh, my name's I John. I John. I John. I was just wondering where you guys think Jake Gardner will end up this summer. Question is, where do you think Jake Gardner will end up this summer? For all three of us. Toronto. You think he's going to end up in Toronto? Mm-hmm. I get that feeling, too, despite all evidence that suggests that's impossible. I think the Zaitsev move and the Marlowe move will open up enough space for Gardner. Very interesting. I'm sorry. I thought that was all going to Mitch Marner, said Mitch uh, Marner's agent. Yes. His $14 making, million dollar he, contract. No, what's Kawhi Leonard making? Cool. We'll have that. Yes. <laughs> uh, I, I, the rumor I heard with him was uh, Minnesota. But the thing about that is Jake Gardner's, um, like, good. <laughs> so I find that hard to believe. Um, I have uh, – it's one of those – it's it's about as dream a scenario as Reimer returning to the team. I want to believe it's going to happen. It's probably not. It's weird that I'm, like, getting all nostalgic about Jake Gardner after all the things I've screened about him o- over the years. But I just feel like he could be had – for a decent number. The number where we keep hearing is five. Which, uh, which yeah, seems low. Over, over eight, though. Over eight, yes, Which yeah. is a, that's concerning for a guy with back issues, but we also, we also know that um, Robida Island, just because there's no one on it right now, well, there is one guy there on it. There is one guy. Um, mm-hmm. It's still a landmass that exists. Right. So, but I, I don't think they're re signing him to, to throw him on there. Um, and if there's any team that can rehabilitate him, it's the Leafs. Um, but the one thing that takes me away from that little fairy tale is at his locker cleanup, it did really sound like he was saying goodbye. A lot can change in two months. Um, I, I don't know where else he, he ends up, really. I have an answer. Edmonton. Florida Panthers. Florida Panthers. So the cap just bun the cap. Yeah, well, they've they got, what do they have, $25 million to spend? Yeah. So even if you sign Panarin and Bobrovsky, you've still got $5 million. And I think I think that they give him. I, I think he goes to the Florida Panthers. And I do also think I, I just have this feeling about Aaron Ekblad that he's getting traded this summer. Gardner's rights for Ekblad. Yeah. You heard it here first. <laughs> but I, d- I think I think the Florida Panthers make a lot of sense based on what they want to be. Actually, Zaitsev was a name I heard bandied about. Uh, Florida? Bandied around with the Florida Panthers. Yeah, that'd be great. Interesting. We'll take that in return. Thank you very much. I'll take <laughs> exactly one of those, please. Yes. All right. Next question in the back. Vloggers be getting paid. What's up, brother? Hi, I'm Sam from Hamilton. Speaking about Aaron Eckblad, I would love Aaron Eckblad to be the lead. So there was a scenario I was thinking of, and I make it. Through this is a really long question, Sam. You gotta, <laughs> you gotta shorten this one up, man. I gotta. Re- you're Hamilton. putting a lot of pressure on me here, buddy. It's Hamilton. So. Um, Here's the thing. The Leafs, assuming Mitch Marner does not get offer sheet, like the Leafs wait, offer sheet Patrick Line A, and then trade Mitch Marner straight up for Aaron Eckblad. Okay, okay so, so Sam just did a whole science woo! experiment. Okay. That's like, Sam was on cap friendly before he showed up here tonight. And so his idea. Yeah. Any of you have like a Dr. Dreadful kit when you were a kid? <laughs> he just concocted some sort of. So what he's, what he's saying is this he's assuming that nobody will offer sheet Mitch Marner, which I tend to agree with. Mm-hmm. Um, because to offer sheet him, it has to be over $10.5 million. And I don't think any team's given him up four first-round picks. I just don't see it. So he's saying, wait on Mitch Marner, offer sheet Patrick Line with that money, and then trade Mitch Marner straight up for Aaron McBlad. Is that what he said? That's what he said. That's what he said. How are you awake enough I f- to... One robotic. more time. One more time. So... Please. You wait on, on Mitch Marner. Gotcha. You let him and Darren Ferris visit all the teams yes. that they're going to visit. Okay, yeah, we've heard that. Whatever. Um, this, uh, that agent just is so annoying. He does this with e- – yeah. you look up all of his clients. He does this with every single one of them. It's like having That's a an girlfriend and openly being on Tinder. Yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> I just I just have it for friends. <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. I just want to meet business associates. Yeah, just like talking about the office. So he wants to wait on Mitch Marner, um, offer sheet Patrick Line, and then you're assuming that Patrick Line signs it. Which I don't I don't think Winnipeg would be able to, to offer. Then you're giving up, and here's why this doesn't work. Oh no, it does work because they got the first round picks. So you're giving up four first round picks, and then you flip Marner to Wait, the Le- so the Leafs are offer shooting line, line a ten million dollars. Ten point five. They can't. They don't have their own first round pick. They do, it's after the draft. Oh, it's mm, after the draft. It's yeah, next year's yeah. first Devious, round pick. Sir. So you are giving up four first round picks. Yeah, but Patrick Line Austin Matthews. Patrick Ma- Line Austin Matthews would be pretty sweet. Is that worth fourth first round pick? No, this, I, this, this, oh, this is no. quite the scenario. It's, no. not, <laughs> it's not happening. Also, this is an NHL so, 19. So you're saying... No, but Aaron Eckblad, in my opinion, is his career. Is a, he's a Norris Trophy. Oh, my God. Where did Aaron Eckblad enter this equation? He was going to get traded for Mitch Marner. <laughs> he was going to get traded <laughs> yeah. for Mitch Marner. Got it. Yeah. So I was like, how are you oversheeting line A when you're just... It seems but we're only, we're only trading his rights. Yeah. No, and... and for Aaron Eckblad. And you have to take Paul Marner, too. <laughs> oh, yeah. That, that is fair. But let's do it. I'm going to complete the deal. James Reimer. James Reimer. All right. That gets it done. All right. James Reimer. James Reimer for Mitch Marner straight up. Yeah. There you go. I mean, you got to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> you Next think question. About hands it. up. Hands up. Okay. We're going to go this side of the room. Yes. Sorry. Your name. Zoe. Zoe. So, did you drive up from Detroit? Um, I was actually at a conference in Toronto, so I ditched the last night of my conference and came here. Wow, well, she wow. drove straight what? here from Detroit. Detroit. <laughs> <laughs> That's how the story is going to go because she doesn't have a microphone. Yeah. That's so I, nice that so you did that. So you're in Toronto for a conference. Wow. What do you do? What's the conference? Uh, I actually work at Little Caesars Arena. <laughs> she the works best arena in the league. She works at Panago Pizza Arena. That's that is nice. that is the best <laughs> in Detroit. That is yes. Little Caesars is the best one. So, um, okay, so what do you do then? I work in marketing, actually. You? Okay, so you're up for a marketing conference. Yeah. We, we have a lot of marketing professionals in Toronto. Everybody's in marketing. It was actually hosted by the people at Scotiabank Arena who were fantastic. So. Okay, so pe- hosted by the people at Scotiabank Arena. And your question for yeah. Steve. I, I have a question for you first. Oh. Have you handled a live octopus? <laughs> yes, I, I have not, but I have seen many live octopi. She has not, Octopod. but she's seen many. <laughs> octopi. <laughs> before, before you ask your question, does your trade proposal involve four or more teams? <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, I'm actually curious. Um, who do you guys project going top five in the draft? Ooh, geez. <laughs> okay, so projecting five top five in the draft. Oh, my dear Jesus um, see, okay, I'll just be completely open and honest with you. Because the Leafs don't suck anymore, I haven't paid attention. Yeah. And I, <laughs> yeah. well, you know, oh yeah, that's true. The Red Wings do suck. That uh, is so what? True. Who's order? What's the order? Uh, so on thehockeywriters.com, we <laughs> have in order: Jack Hughes at number one, Capocacco at uh, number two. Although number one in name pronunciation, number three, Cole Caulfield who I thought was supposed to go much later in mm-hmm. the first round. He's, he's moved up quickly. I'm, I'm going to say this. I think Capocacco goes first. No. Uh, yeah. no. To New Jersey. Yeah, I do. And I, I'll tell you why. I think, I think that New Jersey's crazy. Well, yeah. If you, if you look at some of their past history, they're crazy. And I think they're going to be wowed by his, was it the World Cup? Or what are the Spangler? Yes. Or whatever yeah, the World, heck World it was? Championships. World Championships. I think, I think that that got him a lot of points. And I know that's crazy. And if I'm wrong, whatever, it doesn't matter. But... I think that he's the one that goes first. Should he is a different question. I think New Jersey goes with him. How soon after does Tyler Dello get fired for strangling somebody? Because <laughs> I think it might happen. He would. He would. Uh, Jack, Jack Hughes should go first. On sportsnet.ca, they have someone else going third. They have Bowen Byram, who you're going to be shocked, played in the WHL. <laughs> no way. Uh, and then number four, Alex Turcott, and number five, Trevor Zegras. So wh- which pick do the Red Wings have? They have number six, which is Dylan Cousins, except he spells it ridiculous. How does he spell Dylan? Uh, Dylon, so that's cool. But Cousins is C. Is that D-I-L-O-N? Yeah. Uh, D-Y, yes, L-A-N. No, not even close, Adam. Jesus. Well, di- that's how you spell Dylan, isn't it? D-Y-L-A-N. Yeah. I thought you said O. Oh. Well, you s- made it sound like he spelled it wrong. Well, you said... <laughs> anyway. <laughs> no, you, am I wrong? You, am, I, am I crazy? You spelled Dylan D-I-L-L-O-N. No, it wasn't no, even two don't. L's. No, you no, don't. No, that's how you correctly D-Y-L-A-N spell Dylan. D-Y-L-A-N is the correct spelling no, of Dylan. Are there any Dylan's Dylan? Dylan? Roll it back. <laughs> Roll it back. The show is... I, I am more right, though. 
<laughs> okay, so who do you who do you think who do you think goes top three? Just is, just pick. This is the loudest anyone's been in a bookstore without getting thrown up. Um, uh, Sportsnet has him going number seven, but I've heard the guys on the Wing Wheel podcast talk about this guy a lot. Vasily Pudskov. Oh, he won't be here for two years though. He signed in the KHL for two years. That's the that's why he's lower. Yeah, but yeah. The KHL, it's always like, yeah, he's no contract yeah, anymore. Just buy, yeah, just, you know, <laughs> just buy him. He, yeah. The KHL is funny because you have to buy yourself out of your own contract. So you have to spend your own money to buy yourself out. But you can do it. Uh, so there but was a... There was a, there was a, I'm going to tell the story, screw it. There was, there was a player a few years ago who was supposed to make the Leafs, uh, you might remember, he was supposed to be their fourth line center, Petri Conciola. Yeah. Yes. And he played. Sounded like a ship captain. He sure did. Yeah, Petri Conciola on the good ship Valor. Sorry, I've been watching a lot of Below Deck. Um, and uh, it's a ridiculous show. They fight all the time. It's great. Um, I don't even know what that is. It's a great show. You would love it. Is it a reality show? Yeah, it's just oh. people fighting on a yacht. Okay, all right. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> uh, so Petri Conciola has to buy himself out of his KHL deal uh, for his shot to play in the NHL. He's going to play for the Leafs. They're supposed to suck, right? Except for he played some exhibition games and was extraordinarily bad. I remember that, yeah. And then got sent to the Marlies. So while with the Marlies, uh, written on his stick was FML. And oh, no. And, there was, and someone on the team is like, oh, so like, you know, he's Finnish or whatever. So, hey, what, what, is, what, is, what does FML stand for? And because we're in the chapters, I will not tell you what it stands for, but it stood for exactly what you <laughs> thought it stood for. Oh, man. And shortly later, he went back to the KHL. But imagine you had to that pay. That has not answered <laughs> her question. No. no. <laughs> Pick my, a name. The <laughs> Russian one. The Russian one. That is my answer. Yeah. So the other Brzezgala, <laughs> or the other Bobrovsky, as Adam would call him. Yeah. No. So Jesse, that's who we think is going to go. My six. top five of Sportsnet's top five. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever Stan Constantino says. Yes. Okay. All right. And uh, Leafs get uh, Jack Hughes number two. I'm sorry we don't have a more educated answer for you. I really am. Um, I'm not. Uh, because it means the Leafs are good. <laughs> Sorry, and you're a Wings fan, eh? Boy, I, I I would feel bad for you, but none of us feel bad for you. Yeah. Can I say <laughs> thank you for Mike? Yeah. Is that is that something we should do? Yeah, you got you did get yeah, Stevie. You guys yeah. are gonna be good in about three seconds. Um, it, it'd be interesting to see if the Red Wings and Stevie Y did something bold at the draft because I actually think their rebuild, even though they have some pretty bad contracts on the team still, I think the rebuild is going a about the way it should. Their best players are young. So if they put together some sort of package to move up in the draft and maybe somehow find themselves in a one or two seed, I don't know how they would do that. But if they could somehow push themselves into the top three and get a really strong piece that you can build around, I think that could be what brings them back into contention in a few years. Maybe. Next question. Who do we got? Front row, your name. Jamie. 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 Um, so what do we think about Kawhi getting asked where he was going about three seconds after winning? And to be fair, the person asking that question was Doris Burke, who has so cojones. Can and I? She will ask anybody anything. Jesse, please. I have a bone to pick with Doris Burke. This will go well. At the <laughs> <laughs> so Doris Burke shows up to the championship celebration. Everybody's just like, "Hey, we won the NBA championship." And she starts asking about everybody's old lives. It's like going to a wedding and being like, hey, so what did you learn from your girlfriend in high school that led to this wedding? <laughs> like, she asked Kyle Lowry what, what he told DeMar. Right. And you're yeah. why are you asking that at this And he's moment? like, I'll FaceTime him later, but this is for us. Right. That was his answer. And then she asked Mark Gasol what he told his Grizzlies teammates. Yeah. And it's like, why are you bringing up the – let's celebrate this. Moment. Anyways, so I got a little perturbed at that. I was – it, it, it shocked me that she asked those questions what at would that you, moment. What would have been better? Because those were the storylines, right? Sure. But those are the storylines for not that moment when the storyline there is about this team, this team that did the impossible right. and beat this dynasty and won the championship. Right. Okay. Uh, you know what? I would If I were her and I was going to reach into the past, the story I do ask Kyle Lowry about – is the January meeting with Masai Ujiri where they patch things up. Mm. And yes. the whole thing about when he and... Because there's a story the line that's randomly emerged late recently that Kawhi and Kyle were sort of... Like, they were friendly, but they weren't really tight. And then somehow throughout the year, they became tighter and tighter and tighter. 
I would like to know about that. Mm-hmm. I, I, I agree with you. I think maybe those were just the storylines that had lingered from this past off season, and maybe just those were the ones that came to mind. I don't know. It's a good point. It's a good I point. Think you, I think you leave that for like a Katie Nolan sit down a week yeah. later. Fair enough. Yes. Though. Yes, and also a good candidate that you brought up there. What I, I was annoyed by it in the moment, but it didn't bother me that much until I saw how many interviews they did afterward. I'm like, man, there was plenty of time to ask that on your network or somewhere else yeah. afterward right. afterward the uh, the trophies there i can see it and you're asking about demar derosa and the memphis grizzlies yeah yeah if there, no! was, if there was, ever was a non-player what, what do you think about cj miles commercial <laughs> exactly <laughs> well what do you think about the dub they did wasn't that cute <laughs> what's the line anyway here have fun with the larry o'brien trophy okay <laughs> Like, no, so, so Jose Calderon was real good for us yeah. at one time. Like, uh, next question. Next question. Yeah, over here. By have the way, you, have you seen Gravis Vasquez's tweet about how happy what's, he is? For what the is group? your name? So John. Fun story with John, who's about to ask a question. Steve and I were peeing and talking to each other, <laughs> and John was in the stall in the middle, and he came out and he was like, "Oh, it's you!" And we're like, "Hey, how are you?" <laughs> I can only imagine that was a very trippy experience. So that's how we met John. John, welcome. Thank you. Uh, so, um, John from West Hill, actually. John from West yeah, Hill. John yeah, from West Hill. What is West Hill? It is a place that is great. It's a, and it's sometimes a, you get shot with fireworks. It's a borough of Scarborough. Oh, okay. Okay, so John, tell us. What's up? I'm just wondering with uh, Masai pulling off the crazy trade and you see in the NHL with Columbus, Yarmo Kekalainen, and with everything he's done, yeah. uh, likely GMs are going to replicate that. So what crazy shenanigans are you expecting this upcoming season Ooh. What I, I'd echo what Chris Johnson said, which is he th- expects the Leafs to do something crazy. Maybe a couple crazy things. And ones that you go, whoa. Ekblad is the name that keeps coming up, according to Samilton, with the four-team trade. <laughs> um, so that one's really interesting. Um, Florida is a super-duper fun, crazy candidate. Um, I like the Minnesota connection of Paul Fenton being nuts, apparently, and we had no idea for many years. And um, Chuck Fletcher in Philadelphia, I think, uh, could do some pretty crazy things. You know what I think we might see is we haven't seen a trade like the Ryan Johansson for Seth Jones trade in quite some time. And, I mean, now I think there's a pretty clear winner, but it's not like it's not like At Nashville sucks. At the time, we sucks. didn't know that, yeah. Yeah, it's not like Nashville sucks as a result. I would not be stunned to see two of the big-name RFAs traded for each other. Uh, I think that could be pretty interesting. I I doubt it's Miko Rantanen, but you, you take any one of the names. Braden Point, to me, is the name that doesn't come up enough in the how the hell are they going to keep this guy conversation. So I He think should be, be named number one because he's the best player. Yeah. He yeah. is by far. Sorry, every Mitch Marner fan out there, but Braden Point's a better hockey player, period. Also, At this point. Yes. I yeah, yeah 100%. We're talking about a completely stacked team having a player go from league men to... Uh, like at l- minimum Co- nine million money? dollars. Cut your off money. Yes, yeah. yeah so uh, that that to me is what I think could happen: is two RFAs get traded for each other. It might be a smaller thing, you know. Maybe a Janssen goes for someone or Kapanen goes for someone. But I think uh, two of the big will name be RFAs could be traded for each other. And you know, a candidate to watch out for is is Winnipeg because Truba and Winnipeg don't get along. And Winnipeg was asking for a Truba comparable, like a right-handed shot defenseman, which doesn't make sense. Now that they're open to something else, well, and we're in our have, yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I listen. Winnipeg's pretty smart, man. We're, <laughs> That's we're, why they're good. We're in our in our little leaf bubble, um, and we get frustrated because you know they have all these RFAs and cap problems, and they just can't get over the hump. D- Winnipeg's like nearly identical yeah. in some ways, but at least they had the one deep run. I look at them, and it reminds me of the Raptors a little bit. They had the one deep run. Um, they can't get players to stay. Yeah, they have all this talent, but you know we just lost in the first round, so maybe we're as good as we are. They're a great candidate to do something truly nuts. Right. Yeah. Okay. Next question. We, Leaf Hat. Yes, sir. Your name? I'm Giovanni from Pickering. What's up, Giovanni from Pickering? From Pickering. I just want to know if Kawhi doesn't end up staying, is this the greatest one and done trade? Like where even if he walks, it's just the greatest year period. Yes. Yeah, well, so it, if it, is sorry, let me do Adam's job. Is Kawhi the greatest one and done? Oh yeah, I in said sports that. history. If he leaves, uh, 
Adam said yes. Yes. I will say also yes. Yeah. Um, I there was a tweet last night that I thought was great. I just want Kawhi to continue to sign one year contracts wherever he goes and just win championships and solve mysteries. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, we got time for two more questions. We got to make them quick here because the the fine Steve folks still here. has to <laughs> sign the box. Yeah, so Steve's got to sign the box. We're in a and store, store that closes. closes. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> uh, okay, you have had your question. What's your name? Adam. Great name. All right, Adam. What's your question? Boo. Oh, hey, journalism hey, student. Ryerson. Boo. <laughs> I'm kidding. I went there too. I just dropped down. So th that's it. Yeah. Okay. So the question is, and, and, and it's spe specifically pertaining to your sister Rachel, who, uh, how do you how do you want to describe it? How would you? Uh, I, I want to get it right. Yeah. Well, she has a she has a number of dude. Sometimes I don't get it right. Yeah. She she has a, a number of uh, physical and mental disabilities. She has autism. She has uh, cerebral palsy, and uh, yeah, several other so things. So what was it like uh, writing about them in the book, and how important that was that to you? It was great. Uh, you know what? I really enjoyed uh, writing about my family because. I don't think it's a particularly unique story necessarily, and I and I don't, you know, I didn't I, I didn't have a hard upbringing or anything like that. I just think if you if you look hard enough um, through your your family's history, you will find a really interesting story there. Like I, I get bothered when uh, you know I, I spoke to a friend and oh, oh yeah, what's your background and. You know, in the greater Toronto area, there's a lot of really interesting stories and people coming from all sorts of places. And they go, well, you know, my family, you know, just generations of farmers from like Barrie. Yeah. Onto but I'm like, you know what, man? Like, they didn't just farm and go to bed. Like, th there's <laughs> got to <laughs> Well, they might have. I mean, some Farming days, is hard. Some the days they did. The yeah. least interesting family in the world. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> And then generations down the line, they discovered one of them was amazing at basketball, yeah. and he went on to win finals MVP for the Toronto Raptors. His name was Kawhi Leonard. Kawhi Leonard. The Leonards, a <laughs> long line of farmers group, from Barrie, Ontario. Group of they fun farmed people. apples, because yeah. there was always apple time. It is always apple time. Oh, my God. And the book is called The Orchard. So to answer his question so quickly, so we we got to go yeah, quick here. Sorry, because so, um, it sorry was, to push it was, you. It was, so it was a book about like my life and career and everything. But I, I feel like, um, it, you know how I always, I, how I tell stories without context very often? So I, <laughs> I knew I couldn't do that with the book. So to talk about my weird little YouTube journey, it was impossible to do without context. And to give context, I had to talk about my family's history and, and, uh, and my upbringing. How did Which they feel reading about themselves? Very quickly. Um, I, t I talked to my parents uh, about it a lot, and, mm -hmm. I, and I, read them, I read them that part. Mm -hmm. I didn't surprise them. Can you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> it happens. There's I, yeah. lots of stories about that. No, yeah, for sure. You know, uh, luckily I like my parents. You know, but yeah. uh, no, we, we we talked about it and we had we had like a real like adult back and forth where, you know, I'm 31 now. And so I was able to go uh, you know, I thought I thought it was pretty fair with things that I didn't like when I was younger. Th this is getting more out of the family now and sort of into the workplace, but there were a lot of things that I resented when I was younger that now that I had an adult perspective on it, mm -hmm. um, I could have an adult conversation like with my parents, with former employers. The, the, guy, the guy I had the longest back and forth with was Clarky uh, from Leafs TV because that, man, working for that guy at the time, I, I mean, who, who doesn't want to strangle their boss sometimes? But I, and he wanted to strangle me. Um, but he really gave me a shot and helped me be where I am today, and this is a really convoluted answer, I know. But um, writing about the the early stuff made it possible for the for the rest of the book. And the family part is one of the last things I wrote um, because it was the part that I knew I had to get the most right, if that makes sense. Um, I could worry about like details and editing little stories later, and and I remembered them better. You know what I mean? Like the Olympics and World Juniors and stuff that happened to me like six years ago or, you know, within the past half decade. That was easy. Um, writing about the first like f 16 years of my life in one chapter <laughs> was, yeah. was, uh, a was, challenge. A, was a challenge. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Last question. Real quick answer, Steve. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> right, so Your name? I'm Nick from that Martin Kennedy 
Nick from Lawrence and Kennedy. All right. We're, we're Steve and Adam from Lawrence and Port Union. Uh, go ahead, man. You complained a lot about uh, facing Boston. Yes. But, so let's say next year, complete fantasy question. Let's say next year the Leafs win the Cup. What four teams, game seven series. Okay, so if the Leafs go to the, go to the finals and win next year, each series is seventh game, which four teams do you want them to be? Ooh. Okay. Please go quickly. Yes. Uh, which People four need to book sign. Like, you, like, I know that you're thinking about this, but yeah, Boston, yes. Montreal Canadiens first round. Okay. Yeah. I want the Montreal Canadiens in the first round. Good. I want the Tampa Bay Lightning in the second Ooh, round. Ooh, all right. I want Boston. I know this is probably impossible what I'm laying out, but who cares? It's a fantasy scenario. Yeah. I want... Ooh. Islanders? Oh, okay. Yes, I changed my answer. I changed my answer. <laughs> uh, okay, now that we've changed it. Boston in the first round, seventh game in TD Garden. The Leafs shit kick them. Oh, shoot, I swore in a chapters. Okay, <laughs> well, um, yes, so that what I just said. Um, Montreal in the second round, um, Max Domi makes the mistake for the series winning goal for the Leafs. Oh, um, Max. Islanders Max. in the third round, um, John Tavares, OT winner. And in the Stanley Cup final, the Minnesota Wild for no good reason. <laughs> I just feel like picking on them. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for coming. Please form a queue very quickly so we can get your book signed. And if we don't get it signed in here, we'll get it signed outside, okay? We yes. promise. Follow the guys on Twitter at Steve underscore Dangle, at Adam W-Y-L-D-E, and at Jesse Blake. The Steve Dangle Podcast. Brought to you by Panago Pizza. Order at panago.com and stuff your face with deliciousness.